Let's see if he keeps following me. I may have a pet, may have to take the pet home. Good morning, I'm in Tillamook in Oregon, about an hour from my sister's house over in Portland. And today I'm checking out cheese factories. I personally have cheese phobia, I'll explain that in a minute. But right now I'm at the Blue Heron Cheese Factory. It's one of the minor factories here. The Tillamook Cheese Factory is the major one. And as you can see, it's foggy this morning. Uh, there's a mist covering the entire valley here. And I was woken up this morning by this rooster that you can hear crowing in the background. These guys down here, they take their jobs very seriously. Five o'clock this morning, they were just going at it. Uh, crowing, waking up the entire neighborhood. The Blue Heron Cheese Factory is a little bit unique and they're trying to attract and bring in some tourists to their place with sort of an interesting combo of a petting zoo kind of place along with some vintage antique automobiles that are not running but are interesting to look at and they offer free RV camping overnight. Back behind me they have the roosters and peacocks and oh I guess this guy thinks he's gonna get fed over here he's running up to come see me he thinks I have food or something. Then they have some like photo ops here with the uh, cutouts. Uh, <laughs> this chicken is following me. This is the main building here for the Blue Heron Cheese Factory. Uh, inside you can do cheese samples for free. They also have wine tasting. I think they're five for five dollars or something like that. And you can try all these different wines. Um, I don't know, it's an interesting place. <laughs> This chicken's still following me. Let's see if he keeps following me. I may have a pet, may have to take the pet home. A new ch pet chicken. Yeah, he's still following me. Inside they give feed out or sell some feed for the uh, billy goats here. So they have goats and some sheep. And then there's a donkey over there and I think some llamas. I saw two or three llamas. Yeah, there's three llamas over there. Sort of fun. They have two areas that they offer for parking for RVs. Over here next to the antique vehicles and then back in the distance you can see the step van on this little rise behind the main parking lot and there's three or four vans back there and two or three RVs and my step van. Behind me here's some of the more interesting vehicles. I think this is a steam-powered winch system for a ferry. Um, I don't know much about this. Uh, you guys can write your comments here and what you think this is, but it looks like a set of wood pontoon floats, although I don't think this thing would float. I think it would be way too heavy, and I don't think the wood would be able to uh, lift this amount of steel. And then there's a large wheel here in the center, and then it looks like a steam uh, engine in the back, or a boiler or something. Right next to it is a very old fire truck and the name on it says auto car. So it's an auto car, probably 1940s, maybe early 1950s. And this is a tanker fire truck. So it just has a big tank on the back. Next to it is a logging truck and I thought the name of the manufacturer, it's especially given the current political climate in the United States with protests going on right now with uh, removing the statues down in the south. Uh, this is called Super White Power. I've never heard of this brand before, but uh, sort of funny to see some of the naming uh, from that era. My question is, is this a real locomotive or somebody's manufacturing uh, in sort of current era a little like kids locomotive for some sort of, I don't know, uh, amusement park or something like that. 
because it looks to me like this is a new manufacturer of something made for an amusement park. It doesn't look like it was originally intended or built for like a commercial use other than amusement. Let me know what you think. This one is my personal favorite. It's a Gerlinger, and I'm not exactly sure what it's for, but it has the wheels, and then there's like this uh, U-shaped uh, area here so that it's able to straddle something. And I don't know if it's for lifting and dragging logs or if it's for lifting pieces of uh, like curbs or siding for a road or exactly what it is but obviously they wanted to get the driver and the engine up above a certain point and then be able to lift something in the middle but I don't really see a lifting mechanism I don't know what it's used for pretty cool vehicle I like it I think it would be fun just to drive this around The last interesting vehicle is this uh, double-decker bus uh, from London. <laughs> it's just really fun to see these vintage vehicles. When I was over in London, I rode these red buses all the time. Of course, newer versions of the same thing. This is the view from the upper RV park where you can park. Uh, it's quite gorgeous. I think this is a great place to sort of back up the, your tailgate or your rear doors of your RV and just sort of be able to look out. So this would be your morning view. Pretty great for a free RV park. So I said I'd explain about the cheese and my cheese phobia. When I was a child, I had a babysitter that was a phenomenal cook and every day she'd make something amazing that I'd never had before. Sugar cookies, it could be oatmeal cookies, it could be um, homemade cake, homemade pie, stuff like that. Shortly after my first Halloween that I actually remember as a child, I was probably five or six years old, um, she lined us up to give us our snacks. And I had just had butterscotch cubes for the very first time or caramel cubes or whatever they are, the little ones in the cellophane uh, wrappers. And that was just like a few days before for Halloween. She lined us up and she had these cubes and they were sort of caramel colored and I thought homemade caramel candy. So she popped it in each of the kids' mouths. We were all lined up and she got to me and popped it in my mouth and it was not candy. It was some sort of strong cheese. I don't know what it was. Uh, maybe a strong sharp uh, cheddar or something like that. Um, I, don't, I don't know. But anyway, I threw up all over her floor. So that was my uh, traumatic experience with cheese as a child. Ever since that time when I taste a strong cheese like that, I have this reaction, this Pavlovian reaction of wanting to just uh, vomit. And it's taken me years and years to try to deal with this and I've struggled my entire life with um, being able to not uh, throw up when I eat cheese. So anyway, I tend to avoid it. It's not uh, something with lactose intolerance. I love milk. I just don't like cheese. I uh, don't like the gooey nacho cheese texture type thing and I don't like the taste of strong cheeses. Super mild cheeses that don't really have much of a taste I'm fine with. But anyway, so I tend to avoid going in places with cheese so I'm not going to do the tour of the Tillman cheese place or the other um, Blue Heron cheese place. Uh, but that's that's my story. All right, it's time for me to head out. I'm going to head over to Forest Grove near Portland to my sisters. That's all I have for this episode. Thank you for watching. Savor the moment. See you next episode.